I am so excited to be doing my first expansion rebuild here of NBA 2K24. And you know, we gotta start it off with the Seattle Supersonics. So what is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? I, like we all know that it's inevitable that there's gonna be two expansion teams coming to the NBA very soon, just because of the influx in talent. And we're saying like, this is the best era ever when it comes to talent and i'm agreeing with that like i recently did a top 25 under 25 list on the second channel link in the description sross go check it out quick plug but yeah i was like wow there was like 35 guys that i thought could make this list like there's so much young talent and then there's just draft class after draft class after draft class players are playing longer in the league so yeah i do think that there's going to be two expansion teams i do think it's going to be vegas and seattle and then there'll be some shuffling when it comes to division like the grizzlies or pelicans or maybe both will come to the eastern conference but for this today we are going to be taking control of the seattle supersonics like i mentioned and we added a nashville team why not the nashville stars they're going to be over there in the southeast division so i put it on 10 protected players for the protect or for the expansion draft we'll see how these are in 2k24 we know in the past though there'll be some good talent that wasn't protected so hopefully on 10 players it won't be the greatest pool in the world i noticed isaiah joe Cambridge williams aren't protected okay oladipo aaron wiggins it's gonna be tough for the thunder to keep most of their most important guys nikhil alexander walker isn't protected nasir little moses brown chris murray and it's gonna be like a fun fantasy style rebuild i'm gonna make the trades i want what why wouldn't you protect clay thompson Kavon Mooney either. Why would you protect Sarich over Clay? You have 10. Oh my God. That's just nothing I could do there. Gallo. Okay. Yeah. The Wizards probably did the right thing. Uh, if we go to Philly. Yep. Yeah, that seems correct. Bucks. All right. I agree. I can't believe everything actually looks pretty good. I think every team did a really good job besides the Warriors who didn't want to keep Clay freaking Thompson. Like, what are you doing? Like the Grizzlies have a ton of talent. So they're kind of, it's tough for them to protect everybody. I get this for the Atlanta Hawks, the Miami Heat. I I get not protecting Kyle Lowry and obviously you don't want to keep uh or protect Duncan Robinson if you can get out of that contract Gordon Hayward makes sense so everything looks really good Ooh, THT wasn't protected yeah like why was your seven protected over THT I don't agree with that but besides like the Clay Thompson one I'm kind of like content with this I think this is actually pretty realistic on who would get kept what I mean I know you have so much guard talent but why not keep Markel Fultz why keep Mo Wagner? Why keep Goga Badatze over Markel Fultz? See, that one doesn't really make a lot of sense either. Spencer Dinwiddie wasn't kept. Um, I think like that's not the worst one in the world by any means. But yeah, pretty shocking to see like Buddy healed Bruce Brown because of that contract maybe. So yeah, Jalen Dern. What? Why? Why wasn't he kept? That doesn't make any sense. That does not make any sense. Gary Trent Jr. wasn't kept. I'm surprised Dylan Brooks if they could have got out of that deal. All right, so Bradley Beal wasn't kept as well. All right, well, we're going to be taking who we want to take. Do we have the number one pick? No, the Nashville Stars do. And they take Bradley Beal. All right, I was going to take Beal if I had the opportunity to, but I got back-to-back -back picks. And you know what? Let's lock down the backcourt here. I'm going to take Markel Fultz, and I'm going to do it. I would normally do this, but I'm going to take Clay Thompson. And our backcourt is now filled then Woody goes, and then Buddy Heald goes. So I'm going to land my center as well in Jalen Duran. I am very shocked that they took him. I would have loved Bruce Brown, but unfortunately can't take him since Buddy Heald was drafted. So obviously I would have loved Bradley Beal and like Markel Fultz, but I think I'm very content with this top three of Fultz, Clay, and Jalen Duran. I think I gotta land THT here with my next pick. Stars are back-to-back. -back. They take Gabe Vincent and Gary Trent Jr. Oh, I was gonna take Gary Trent. That's a nice pick. So with my next two selections, I'm gonna be taking Luke Kennard and instead of Isaiah Joe, I'm gonna opt for the power forward in OKC and that would be Kenrich Williams. Gordon Hayward and Nasir what will go next those are two nice selections there i'm gonna take isaiah hardenstein from the new york knicks and then i'm gonna look for my backup point guard and i'm gonna take javon carter from the chicago bulls it is nice you can kind of see your roster here throughout the draft i don't remember if that was really a thing last year at all stars take cody zeller and reggie bullock i'm gonna take patrick baldwin jr from washington as well as andre jackson former husky currently a rookie on the milwaukee bucks stars take montrez harrell and robert covington to well a former sixer and a current sixer i'm going to take luke Cornett just for some center depth as well as the sean nicks as well so we do have two more picks bruno fernando goes seth curry goes i'm going to get colby jones who was a second round pick out of xavier going to the sacramento kings and then i'm going to take jalen pickett as well a second round pick or was he undrafted out of penn state oh wow the stars do this heat a huge favor and take duncan robinson with their last pick 
Why would you do that? No, Jalen Pickett was actually an early second round pick. Am I tripping? All right, so I'm going to say screw it and run out an 11-man rotation this year with the starting five being Markel Fultz, Clay Thompson in the backcourt, both getting 33 minutes. Each forward in the starting lineup, Luke Kennard, Cameron Williams are going to get 24 minutes. 33 to Jalen Duran, 20 to THT, 17 to Hardenstein, 15 to Carter and Jones, 16 to Pickett, and then 10 to Patrick Baldwin Jr. So yeah, we are three stars under Milan Max, still the expansion head coach here in 2K24. And since this is like a fantasy style rebuild, I'm going to probably make some notable moves at the deadline for anybody that's a pending free agent. Marco Fultz, I'll probably want to bring back, but Hardenstein could get traded. THT will see, but Cornette Knicks could get traded. We'll see how good Clay Thompson does for us. I think I'm going to send uh, Desha next to the G League to start off the year, though. All right, road game against the Lakers to start off the season, and we end up losing by 14. Christian Wood had 25, LeBron had 21, 6, and 14. AD had 19 and 15, as Jalen Darren was our leading scorer to start off the year. Clay Thompson only took six shots. Okay, went three for five from downtown. Nurkic for Markel Fultz. I will not be doing that, but then we blow out the Milwaukee Bucks by 17. All right, Markel Fultz and Klay Thompson combined for 63 points. You'll love to see that. Road game against Minnesota. We end up losing by eight, which is fine. 22 and 11 for Markel Fultz. Klay Thompson had 10 points in this one. Cambridge Williams shot four for 11. I don't know why he's taking 11 shots. And then we end up losing by two to the Dallas Mavericks. But Jalen Darren and Markel Fultz combined for 51 in that game. All right, we are definitely struggling to start off the year. We are currently two and six, now two and seven. All right, so we have been performing much better as of late. We are now above 500, even though we have lost four out of our last five as soon as I basically started talking. Let's win the last game of 2023 and beat the Heat on the road. And they're really giving me some suspense with this one. 2K just randomly takes some time on some random dates. All right, we ended up beating them by three, 113, 110. And with injuries off, everybody has obviously played fully as Marco Fultz is leading the team in points with 17, three and a half rebounds and six assists. Clay Thompson, 16 points, three and a half rebounds. 2.7 assists, shooting 45 from three and 89 from the line. Love to see that. Jalen Duran, 16. Oh my God, yes. 16 and 12, 1.7 blocks. He is a beast. Luke Kennard shooting 52% from three. Wow. Clay shooting 45 from three. Kennard shooting 52% from three. You'll love to see that. THT having a solid year. Kenridge Williams, eight points, five rebounds. There's a chance I would move THT, who's an expiring contract. And as a backup point guard, like I'd be fine with Javon Carter at the backup spot. For an upgrade at the power forward position at the deadline, so we could be on the lookout for that. All right, so we have Giannis and Luca as the 2024 All Star captains. I didn't know if we were gonna get like a sneaky Markel Fultz or Jalen Duran in it. We don't get Clay Thompson either. Bradley Beal on the Nashville Stars looks like doesn't make it also. So we are 29 and 19, 10 games above 500 in year one. That puts us as the 17th. Yeah, the Western Conference is pretty competitive this year. The Nashville Stars are currently the 10th seed. They are 18 and 30 with Dinwiddie and Beal, Gordon Hayward, Roko, and Montrose Hill on that starting five. I like our team better for sure. And I also don't love those jerseys at all. Come on, 2K. Can we see some updated uh, preset expansion team jerseys? We do have Jalen Duran and THT, one in three in most improved player conversation right now. So THT is a free agent at the end of the year anyway. I don't really see a power forward that I'd like to do a trade with. Because I don't know if I want to move Cambridge Williams either because I kind of like him coming off the bench right now. All right, I do like this trade with the Orlando Magic. We'll give them THT now that they don't have Markel Fultz, so lack another point guard. We'll give them THT. We're going to take on Jonathan Isaac, who is going to maybe be our starting power forward for the remainder of the season, and he can be traded in the offseason as well, since he has two years left on his contract. If I move his position to power forward, his overall doesn't change. So Colby Jones is actually shooting the ball pretty well. Javon Carter, 42% from three. Jalen Pickett hasn't been that bad as a rookie either. I do think that Patrick Baldwin Jr. is going to fall to the rotation though, and we'll probably do 18 minutes to Kenrich Williams, and we could do I don't know, 27 to Jonathan Isaac. And I can look to play like Jalen Pickett, Javon Carter, and Colby Jones a little bit more. So that is going to be my only trade I make at the deadline. A pretty quiet deadline. Kennard will worry about in the offseason. Fultz is open to an extension. I'm going to give him around $15 million a year. Four years, it can go up each year. It becomes more and more easy to trade as well. If there's like a point guard down the line I would really like to upgrade with. But that's a good extension for Markel Fultz. Luka Doncic takes home the 2024 MVP award. Wemby takes home rookie of the year. Christian Wood beats out Chris Paul for sixth man of the year in LA. Yeah. Giannis takes home Depoy. Jalen Duran is your most improved player. I mean, he went up seven points, uh, two and a half rebounds, half a block a night, 60% from the field. Luka wins clutch player of the year. Taylor Jenkins, coach of the year. That would be Brad Stevens 
is your executive of the year. No like crazy surprises on these all NBA teams. Maybe Lamelo on second team. Nothing too crazy on third team. Luca making all defensive first team is just kind of wild to me. DeLon Wright. Uh, okay. I mean, he averaged 1.9 steals on all defensive second team. And we do get Colby Jones and Jalen Pickett, two second rounders on all rookie second team. If you combine their shooting percentages, it would have been really good because Colby Jones, 35 from three, 38 from the field. I mean, 38 from the field isn't great, but yeah, 46 from the field for Jalen Pickett, uh, 24 from three. So that's not very good. We did end the season as the three seed in the Western Conference. We're going to be taking on the Phoenix Suns in round one who don't have Bradley Beal. For some reason, they didn't keep him. I don't know why 2K uh, has the Phoenix Suns hating Bradley Beal. It doesn't make any sense. Markel Fultz led this team in scoring, had 5.8 assists tonight, 1.4 steals as well. Klay Thompson, 18 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 2.8 assists, shot 47 from three, nine. 91 from the line. Luke Kennard, just elite efficiency out of him. Jonathan Isaac averaged nine and a half points, eight rebounds. His efficiency sucked, but he did give us a steal um, and a half a night and a block a night. And then you had kind of like role players like Cambridge Williams, Javon Carter, Harnstein. We saw Colby Jones and Pickett stats, and we know that Patrick Baldwin wasn't very good for us. So for the playoffs, if we're trying to win it all in year one, I do think Colby Jones is going to be the odd man out of the rotation. We're going to have a nine man rotation. Harnstein's going to get about 13 minutes. I think uh, Jalen Pickett's going to get about 10 minutes a night. So that is going to be the four-man bench. I'd like 36 to Duran. I'd probably like 30 to Kennard, given how good of a shooter he is. I like 38 to Clay and Fultz. So that gives me about 12 minutes left. We'll do 30 to Isaac, and then I can give about three more to Williams, Carter, and Harnstein. So game one against the Phoenix Suns, we ended up losing by 27 points. Clay had a good game. Fultz did struggle. Duran had 16, 15, and 3. But Booker and KD combined for 89 points. We do take home game 2. Win by 4. All right. I mean, we are the higher seed. 3 versus 6 seed. We do take a 2-1 to one lead. We beat them by 15. Clay and Fultz combined for 61 points. Clay went 7 for 11 from downtown. We got prime Clay back. Game number 4 against Phoenix. We take a 3-1 to one lead. That's what I'm talking about. We end up winning by 22 points. Fultz in these 4 games. He's averaging 28, 4, and 6.5. And a, a steal and a half a night as well. Yeah, I'm glad I re-signed him. And in game 5, we take home the victory by 16 points. Outscore them 30-18 to 18 in the 4th quarter. Clay and Kennard combined for 52. They went 14 for 25 from downtown. And we're taking on the Dallas Mavericks, who do have Luka Doncic, who was phenomenal this season. They did also trade for Clint Capella. Looks like he was a Tim Hardaway Jr. trade. So if you watch the Trailblazers franchise, you know that exact same trade happened there. We end up losing by 20. Oh my God. 96 points combined between Irving, Luka, and Hardy. Clay had a good game. Kennard did what he could. I mean, I think Fultz and Duran were fine. They just wouldn't miss at all. I feel like that, yeah, their field goal percentage, 47 for 76. They shot 50% from downtown as well. 48 free throws to our 14. Is this rigged? It may be, as we end up going down 2-0 after losing by 9. Damn, Jaden Hardy with 45 points. Like, these three are insane. They got 35 free throws. We got 24 here, man. They are really out shooting us at the line. We do win game three. We get 28 free throws in this one. They got 38 free throws. They're just that much better at going to the line. Fultz said, nope, we're not getting swept. I'm dropping 29 and 11. And we tied up two to two. Let's go. We go 18 of 20 at the line. I'm literally just looking at like the total free throw numbers. And they got 31 free throws. Oh my goodness. Game number five. Huge rubber match. We go up three to two. Look at that. Luca had 28. And finally, we get more free throws. 31 to 43 in favor of us. We have a chance to win in six. And we do. And in year one of the Supersonics expansion rebuild, we are in the Western Conference Finals. Folds with 35 and 12. This guy's averaging 25 and 8 in the playoffs. And we're taking on the five-seeded Lakers, who did have the sixth man of the year in Christian Wood. You got Boston Cleveland over there. The Nashville Stars did end up as the 10th seed, but they're going to be picking in the lottery. Game one, Seattle wins by 15. <laughs> we are now three games away from going to the NBA Finals in year one of this expansion rebuild. We beat them by one here in game two. We had 15 free throws. They had 49, and we still ended up winning Fultz and Kennard combined for 59 points. Jonathan Isaac, 16 and 14. Look at that. Clay struggled. It did not matter. We go up three games to zero. 
We beat them by two. They had 30 free throws. We had 27. Clay with 30. Fultz with 29 and 8. Dern with a double double. And let's see if we can win game four. Yes, we can. We just swept the Western Conference Finals. Clay had 31. Dern had 18 and 11. And are we taking on Boston or Cleveland? It's going to be the Boston Celtics. Markel Fultz. Average 25 and 7, 2.3 steals as well. He couldn't hit a three in the Western Conference Finals. Tatum is your Eastern Conference Finals MVP. I mean, it's a really good team there in Boston. They do beat us by three points in game one. I mean, we're in the finals. Let's win it. Jonathan Isaac, five blocks. He had 19 for 19 or 19 and 9 as we win game two by 20. Would you look at that? Fultz is just so good. Jalen Duran is averaging 14 and 10 in the playoffs. Kennard is averaging 18 in the playoff, shooting 50% from three. Clay has struggled a little bit as of late, but is still elite. Are we going to go up two to one? No, we go down to, oh my God, we lost by one. That just hurts. I'd rather get blown out than lose by one. Game four, we stay alive. We beat him by 18. Oh my goodness, man. We are two games away from winning the finals. We are two games away. We lose game five though by three. Oh, they beat us by one and by three in our last two playoff L's. That hurts so much. Game six, we got to win two in a row. At least we're in Seattle for game six, which is the tougher one. Game seven, it's a crapshoot, but oh, third quarter killed us. Yeah, we're down by 21 points in the fourth quarter. I don't think we're... We flirted with it. It was like 105-111, but then they just scored five in a row, so we ended up losing by 10. Damn. All right, you know what? We went to the finals in year one, lost in six. I had no idea that we were going to do that in year one, so I will take it. LeBron retires, Al Horford retires, Rudy Gay retires, Monty Williams retires, and LeBron is heading to the Hall of Fame. I don't think Horford will make it to the Hall of Fame, especially if he never wins a title. He almost got one in 2022. Sorry, Celtics fans. So yeah, we don't have a lottery pick, obviously, since we were just one of the better teams in the league. We have the 27th pick in the draft. The Nashville Stars are going to be selecting at number nine. Rockets via Brooklyn win the lottery. Thunder at two. Magic at three. Hornets four. Pacers five. I guess I'll keep Milan Mack going forward. You should yell, fire him, get a new head coach. But he was just that good for us this year. All right, so I feel like we have three locked-in starters next year. I mean... That's if I bring back Clay, but we'll see. Fultz is a locked-in starting point guard. Darren's a locked-in starting center. I think Kennard is locked in as a starting, like, shooting guard or at least sixth man. Uh, I was going to say, I should say starting small forward or sixth man. I would think about moving Jonathan Isaac. All right, could I move Jonathan Isaac, my 2024 20, first, which is like 27, my second round pick, and I will give you Andre Jackson as well for pick nine. They say no to that. I don't know if me throwing in another second will get it done. There it is. So we just landed top 10 pick in the draft for Jonathan Isaac. And if we take a look at the 2024 mock draft, um, we could see that Aaron Bradshaw could potentially be a pick. Plenty of center depth still there. I think I'll just go with best player available. All right. So here's how the top eight went so far. Ademar, number one. Stefan Castle, number two. Zachary Rusasher goes number three, Alex R four, Aaron Bradshaw five, Ron Holland falls to six, Bronny seven, and then Justin Edwards eight. I would have loved Justice Edwards, Justin Edwards, but you know who's on the board? Matas Buzuelas here, so I'm going to be selecting him with the ninth overall pick in the draft. He's out of the G League Ignite. His name's not Matt, like me. So yeah, he's a 78 overall at the age of 18. We are chilling. Isaiah Collier went 13. How are we letting that happen? I do want to get Tyrese Proctor as like a combo guard in one of these drafts, or at least rebuilds as of late. Luke Kennard, I mean, he's not going to ask for that much in free agency, so I think I'm going to decline it. I'm going to decline... Mm, I could trade him, so I'll pick it up on Patrick Baldwin. I'm going to decline that on Kennard, but I think I could sign him back for cheaper, and that's the goal. So, free agency time. Who wants to come to Seattle? As we have 90 plus million dollars in cap space. Clay Thompson, I'm going to bring back on a three-year deal. It'll be worth about 25 million per year, so 75 million over three years. Let's offer him that. Uh, I do want to bring back Luke Kennard, like I mentioned before, who only wants, yeah, $6 million. So I'm kind of uh, glad I did that. I'll give him a two-year deal. I mean, if we want that true power forward, I could offer DeMar DeRozan a deal, or excuse me, Pascal Siakam, not DeRozan. I could offer DeRozan a deal. I could wait till next year's free agency class, which is even better. That's a really good one to go after some guys. So I may wait a year, see how this team performs next season. I'm not going to renounce the rights on Harnstein yet. So we get Clay and Kennard. It looks like Siakam did accept the deal to go back to the Toronto Raptors. There's Paul George goes to the Spurs. Kawhi to Philly. Harden to Orlando. Claxton to Detroit. What is going on? Okay, so Kawhi did not end up in Philly as he's now here on the market. I'm not going to go after Kawhi. Like I said, I think I'm going to wait another year. I may offer like Obi Top in a deal or 
I was going for Patrick Williams to deal, but why is he going for $28 million? That is kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to look to snag Kelly Olenek on a two-year deal. And we do need a backup center. Christian Wood did win six man of the year last year. Clippers are getting in on him. Uh, Wiseman wants $25 million. No way. We could go after Zach Collins. Mason Plumlee through seven and a half isn't too bad. So you know what? I would offer Christian Wood, I think, a three-year deal as well if he wants to accept that. If not, we can get Mason Plumlee on a two-year deal to be the backup five. We get Kelly Olenek. And we are not going to get either Wood or Plumley. Wood goes back, or no, Wood stays in LA, but goes to the Clippers, Mason Plumley to the Raptors. So I'm going to look to snag Trenton Watford to be my backup center if he wants to accept that. And we do get him. There we go. I don't know much about Earl Jenkins, G League guy, but I'm going to give him a two-year deal. He may get some power forward minutes next year. Damn, Emmanuel quickly uh, is not getting much love. Neither is Bruce Brown. So you know what? I'm going to offer Emmanuel quickly a three-year deal to come here. We will still have a max slot open next offseason. Let's see if we can snag Emmanuel quickly. Look at that. At the 11th hour in free agency, we bring in Emmanuel quickly. That's a pretty big pickup for us next year. Like I said, I plan on going after a big name and that could help if Clay does regress as well. So Clay could even get traded next year. Who knows? I like where this team is headed and I think like we have so much more room for improvement. That's why I'm excited about it. And we can give some of these young guys an opportunity to shine as well. All right. So let's construct this rotation next year. I think Kennard can still start. And I obviously want that backcourt. I may give Earl Jenkins the starting power forward minutes. Let's see what this guy can do. I want quickly getting the six man minutes. I think Matas Buzelos can kill like 23 at the gate. We can go about like 13 to Watford, 15 to Carter. Uh, maybe the same 13 to a Linux. So it'll be a 10 man rotation. Let's go 34 to Fultz and Clay. And then we can give two more minutes to Luke Kennard. So it's going to look like this this year. Maybe we'll find more minutes for Luke Kennard, Kennard especially come playoff time. System proficiency is three star balance at the moment. First game of the season's on the road against the Trailblazers. And we ended up losing by seven. I mean, it's, this season could be a wake up call. And it could be like, Matt, you should have did a lot more in the off season. But we do win game two against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Clay drops 31, Durant 17 and 13. 12 rebounds for Matzas Buzelis as a rookie. I can see it now, upcoming free agents, yeah. Like I said, 2025 free agency is absolutely loaded as you can see. So I'm glad I'm gonna have a max contract extension. Heck, I could even have two if I ended up trading Clay Thompson when that time came. So yeah, we're off to an all right start this year. Two and one, three and one, three and two. I mean, it could be worse, could be better. I wonder if Fultz is really going to emerge as like the true number one on this team so far. I'd like to see him get more assists as well. All right, so we have Luka and Giannis as captains this year. Wemby, Cade both get their first all-star appearance in the NBA. Uh, Kawhi Leonard in Brooklyn now, so that's a good pickup for them since they don't have their first round pick. He makes the all-star game there. We have no all-stars on the Su Seattle Supersonics as we are 22 and 24. We are disappointing this year. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a hangover from our NBA Finals appearance. I mean, Jalen Duran has gotten better. I think Marco Fultz has still been really good, even though his three-point shot is just non-existent. Clay's numbers have gone down a little bit, but I think like Emmanuel quickly has been really good. Luke Kennard has still been an elite shooter. Maybe this team just lacks defensive ability. Matis Buzelis has definitely struggled. Uh, Javon Carter has been certified ass. So we are going to be 23 and 25 at the deadline. If we take a look and see who's a free agent for us at the end of the year, because that person could potentially be traded. Nobody. Everybody is currently under contract. I'm going to look to see what I can get for Kenrich Williams and Javon Carter. I mean, Carter's been really bad and Kenrich isn't even in the rotation. All right. I am tempted in Chris Paul because he's an expiring contract. I just don't know how his playing time is going to coexist with Markel Fultz, who's playing a ton of minutes. But you know what? I'm going to say screw it. Javon Carter could potentially be gone at the end of the year. Chris Paul will be a free agent, possibly even retire. So we're going to make this move, adding CP3 to be the backup point guard. He will play a little bit more than 15 minutes a night. I think there's a chance he could get 18. Yeah, because I still want Marco Fultz being that top point guard. We'll see if Chris Paul can run that second unit and be better for us. I do expect him to retire at the end of the year. Just taking a look at the league leaders with Luka number one. I'm excited to do like a fantasy draft rebuild too uh, very soon. Vucevic is the leading rebounder. Jalen Duran number two though. We have five guys above 10 assists a night. That is cool to see. Jimmy Baller leads steals and Walker Kessler leading the NBA in blocks per game. Let's see if we can make the playoffs. Luka Doncic takes home another MVP award. Justin Edwards has a really good rookie season for Washington. That's cool to see. That's a nice pickup for them. Scoot wins six man of the year behind Willard. Still hasn't been record or traded at the moment. I'm recording this video, so if it does happen between now and then, don't look at me. Lamella Ball, Clutch Player of the Year, Coach of the Year goes to Mark Dagno. Here is All NBA First Team 
No shockers. Second team, Josh Giddy making it. Maybe he's a little bit of a shocker. Darius Garland makes it as well. And then there's all NBA third team. Paul Reed made all defensive second team. Lonzo on the Nashville Stars. That's a nice pickup. Is on um, all defensive first team. And we do get Earl Jenkins on all rookie second team. Not a bad season for this guy that we randomly picked up in free agency. No Matas Bruzelis though on first or second team. That hurts. So we did end the season as the eighth seed in the Western Conference. We are in the playing tournament at 42 and 40 so at least we finished the season above 500 i will definitely take that jalen Duren led the team in scoring faults behind him then it was thompson quickly Kennard, and chris paul so i'm excited to see what chris paul could do for us in the playoffs so yeah obviously a different time period for me right now but we're gonna be here in the playing tournament we went 42 and 40 throughout this season uh we didn't get any all-stars this year and then just kind of looking at the stats like Guess it's a championship hangover. Well, we didn't even win the title last year, but a championship appearance hangover. As we know that Jalen Duren's the guy at the five. I think Markel Fultz is that guy at the four. I mean, Clay did shoot 43% from three and 86 from the line, 45 from the field. But is there a little bit of regression coming? Maybe. Quickly was really good. 37 from 30, 87 uh, from the line, 58% true shooting, which I will definitely take. So for the playoffs, I think Kelly Olenek, who's actually pretty solid for us. Like 48% field goal percentage, 44 from three. Watford, I think we'll get like eight minutes tonight. We're going to keep 13 to Olenek. I think we could go, you know what? Maybe we're not going to play Watford for the playoffs. We'll do 13 Olenek. We'll do uh, 15 to Buzelis. We're going to do 20 to Chris Paul, 27 to Quickly. So we do have not a lot of height off the bench, at least with the sixth and seventh men. We're going to go 28 to Kennard. Let's do 36 to Duran, 36 to Clay, 37 to Fultz. And then we could do 30 to Kennard, 26 to Jenkins. We are three-star balance. Let's see. Can we beat the Minnesota Timberwolves and advance here in the 2025 playoffs? Or are we going to have a disappointing end to the season? We have a good first half, as you can see right here. We are currently up by five, but we're choking it in the fourth quarter. Oh no, don't choke it. Don't choke it. We end up winning by five. 117-112. Dern was the leading scorer. 10 for 11 from the field. Clay at five threes. Let's go. Anthony Edwards at 42, but it was not enough, and we are the seventh seed. So we're going to be taking on the Dallas Mavericks, who have Luka, Kyrie, Akko, OG, Kyle Anderson, Clint Capella, Jaden Hardy. Yeah, good team. We played them last year. We did beat them. We lose game one. Yeah, this time they're the two seed. We're the seventh seed. Clay shoots five for 18, three for 13. It, I hate to say it, but he may be cooked, man. We may try to leverage his salary in the offseason. Oh, Clay, don't go out like this. Uh, Fulton, 26, seven and eight. Oh, wait. I didn't even realize, like, we brought Fultz back to Washington. Now I realize it's like, went to school there. So, yeah, that is pretty cool. I, I can't believe I just realized that. We're going to get Jaden McDaniels on the team as well. We win game three. Jalen Duran dominates 31 and 22. Oh, man. And Clay Kennard. I mean, Kennard is still shooting the ball well in these three games. Game number four. All right, we're alive. Fultz with 29. Duran with 27 and 13 and five blocks. Clay, stop sucking. Please. I don't want to say that you're washed. Game five, we win three in a row. We won by nine. There we go, Clay. You're back. Fultz with 21, 6, 8, and 5 seals. 20 and 15 for Duran. Game number six goes to the Seattle Supersonics. Boom. 26 and 13 for Duran. 22 and 4 for Fultz. 24 and 7 and 3 steals for Quickly. That's what I'm talking about. We're taking on Denver in round two. Denver's got Murray, KCP, Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, Jokic, Christian Brown off the bench. Pretty much their standard team. They do have Kevin Love there as well off the bench. We're sticking with our squad. We do lose game one by 20. 76 points combined between Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. Duran with 29, 17, 2 and 2. 12 assists for Chris Paul off the bench. I don't want to see him go out like this. I mean, like, this is a good run for Chris Paul. Like, the Warriors are nowhere to be found, so I'm glad I made a move acquiring him. Or no, did I acquire him from Denver? I mean, either way, we're down 2-0. I'm forgetting where I got Chris Paul from. No, it was Golden State. I don't know why I'm tripping. But yeah, we unfortunately lose by 21. So we've been blown out in the first two games. We stay alive, though. We win by one point quickly with 26 off the bench. 20 rebounds for Jalen Duran. He's averaging 15 in the playoffs. Clay, uh, his efficiency has been so bad. Game number five, uh, four, we lose by two. Damn, we were so close to staying alive here in this series. 42 minutes for Jalen Duran, and we end up getting gentlemen swept. We lose by eight here in game five. What are you going to do? But yeah, you know, this is still a good team. We're still going to be fine. I think we're going to get much better this offseason. You have a rematch of the 2012 NBA Finals here. Heat versus Thunder. The Heat have De'Aaron Fox, 
How the hell did they pull that off? And keeping Bam and Hero. They got Ben Simmons and a first round pick got it done. Wow, I can't wait for like a fantasy style Nets rebuild and I can move Ben Simmons for basically anyone. Shout out to the Nashville Stars with Bradley Beal and Lonzo Ball making it to the conference finals, but losing to the Heat. It would be cool if we ended up facing them at one point and, and the Thunder win it all with Shea Gilgis Alexander being your finals MVP. They've added uh, Stefan Castle from UConn, Xavier uh, Tillman, and they also added Daniel Gafford as well. So Kyle Lowry retired in Cleveland. Russell Westbrook retires. Kevin Love, Gallo as well. We are going to see a few players. Oh, just Russell Westbrook in the Hall of Fame. Russ and Kyle Lowry get their jerseys retired. We will not have a pick here in the 16-team lottery, but the Golden State Warriors, guess it worked out moving on from Chris Paul because they ended up getting the number one overall pick. They win the lottery. Pelicans 2 via Milwaukee. Bulls at three. We have the 19th overall selection in this draft. I think I'm going to keep Milan Mack as my head coach, man. He has been good for us. All right, so we are here during the 2025 NBA draft. Evan O'Connor out of Indiana, maybe brother of Kevin O'Connor, is supposed to go number one here in this class. If we just take a look here at the uh, overalls, he looks pretty good. Shooting guard, 19 years old. We could try to make a move up or Art O'Neal. Shaq's... <laughs> not check son the Kemp I think we could use to leverage Clay Thompson's 25 million dollar a year salary because I don't want to move Fultz quickly I don't want to move Uzelis I don't think I need to move Luke Kennard Earl Jenkins eh we'll see all right let's fleece the Philadelphia 76ers let's trade them Clay Thompson and pick 19 for Tyrese Maxey so welcome to Seattle Tyrese Maxey we do have a smaller backcourt I mean Marco Fultz is 6-4 Maxey at the two and we reunited him with Emmanuel quickly, who were teammates together at Kentucky. So that is pretty dope. Kobe Oakley was actually the number one overall pick. Wow. Uh, Evan O'Connor ended up going five to Houston. William House Jr. is the only 80 overall. And he went third overall to the Chicago Bulls. So I'm going to decline the options on Watford, Olenek, and Baldwin Jr. I would think about bringing back Watford and Olenek in free agency. We'll pick up Duran. I just want to have as much cap space as possible, even though I just picked up $10 million by trading Clay for Maxi. Because we want to go after a big name, and that could be Giannis Antetokounmpo. I'm going to throw the bag at some of the big fish. So Giannis, I could afford. Let's go out. No trade clause, player option. We could get Jimmy Butler, who could be a very good fit for this team as well. I don't think I need any centers. We have Jalen Duran. Point guard, like there is some really good ones, but I don't mind keeping Fultz. Don't mind keeping Maxi, obviously. So I would try to get Jason Tatum as well. Let's offer him player option, no trade clause. I would love Evan Mobley, but he is restricted. So you know what? Let's offer Jimmy Butler a two-year deal as well. I feel like we'll get that after day one which we do. So Giannis and Tatum accept other offers. I would have to renounce the rights on either Watford or, or Olenek. We will choose Kelly Olenek. So Tatum goes to Cleveland and Giannis goes to the Knicks. It will piss me off a little bit if they are here after moratorium and I could have just waited. Uh, Tatum ended up being here again, but I'm not even going to think that I would have gotten him. Jalen Green ended up being unrestricted. Same with Franz Wagner. So right now with Jimmy Butler at the helm at the small forward position, we're good at point guard. I think we're fine at guard specifically because quickly could be the backup point guard. We got Butler and Buzelis. We got to figure out the big man spots though. Whoa, I can afford to bring back Chris Paul on a one-year deal. Let's see if we could pick him back up on that because we can always trade that salary as well. Ooh, Kavon Mooney is a backup center. That would be a huge pickup for us. So let's go out and do that. I mean, we could try to get Chris Paul another ring. I don't need to make any trades right now. But yeah, we saw that Giannis went to the Knicks. Donovan Mitchell goes to Dallas. So I guess Tatum hasn't signed yet. Kyrie Irving goes to the Kings. Jalen Green to the Bucks. All right, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm surprised Tatum has yet to sign here. He ends up going back to Boston. Look at that. All right, so just taking a look here at play progression. Jimmy Butler regresses, which I'm not surprised with. But I do think that this team can win a championship next year. I want to get Chris Paul a ring before he retires. All right, I kind of want to go Butler at the four. Obviously, Duran at the five, but I kind of want to do Buzelis maybe starting at the three. We'll have Maxi and Fultz in the backcourt. Earl Jenkins can get about 15 minutes off the bench. Same with Kevon Mooney. So, Luke Kennard might get like 10 minutes a night. So, nothing to Andre Jackson, Isaiah Mobley, Saban Lee, or Kobe Jones. And those remaining six minutes are going to go to Markel Fultz. So, I, I'm excited to see what this team can do. Obviously, we're going to see a little bit um, of regression from Luke Kennard, at least in his counting numbers. System proficiency is three star balanced. Okay, they don't like Buzelis, who we could look to move if we really wanted to. But I like this team a lot. I think we can be one of the better teams again in the Western Conference. I mean, we just added Jimmy Butler and Tyrese Maxey, and we just lost Klay Thompson. We started off the season 7-1, so I will definitely take that. I'm just looking at the player stats through those eight games. Maxey is on fire. Jalen Duran, 63% field goal percentage, 18-11. and 11. Fultz has been great. Quickly has been good. 
Jimmy, I just really need him to be that leader, play defense, and we should be fine. All right, so let's see if we got Jimmy Butler or Tyrus Maxey to make the All-Star game this year. You got RJ Barrett, Brandon Miller making it, Evan Mobley for the first time, and we did get Jimmy Butler as a starter. There we go, who's only averaging 16 points. That's how effective he is, so I'm really happy with the signing. Seven assists, 4.7 rebounds, 2.1 steals a night, and Jimmy Butler with a 63% true shooting percentage. Hell yeah, we are currently... 45 and I believe six right now on the season. I really like the core that we have. It's cool to have quickly and Maxi back on the same team together. And I feel like we have the best record in the NBA. Yeah, 45 and six. I don't know if I'm going to be a buyer at the deadline with this team. I mean, I got to figure that out very soon, but we're killing it. Maybe I look for an upgrade at the power forward spot. I move Butler back to the three, but it seems to be working out. I don't really like any of these trades and Matzis Buzelis is shooting 38% from three this year. So I think he's been fine for us. So you know what? 47 and six. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's go here till the end of the season and let's hopefully win a championship in 2026. So Luka Doncic ends up winning MVP. Bronny James, rookie of the year. Would you look at that? Finally plays in the NBA and what? would be his second year. Sir Thompson takes home six man. Mobley Depoy. Isaiah Collier, most improved. Still can't believe he fell to 13th. What a pickup there from the Sacramento Kings. And Steph, clutch player of the year. We get coach of the year. I always find Milan Max. So shout out bringing him back. Darius Garland makes all NBA first team. Giannis on the Knicks. Man, I wanted him. You have Ja, Jason, Mobley, Lamelo, and Shea on second team. Third team, Donovan Mitchell and Dallas with Luka. Uh, I hope to not play them in the playoffs. Wemby, Joel Embiid, Josh Giddy on the Pelicans, so no longer on the Thunder. All defensive first team, Monzo on the Nashville Stars. He's up to an 88 overall. You have Anthony Edwards, Evan Mobley, Triple J, and Wemben. Yama, Luka, Justin Edwards, Jason Tatum, Giannis, and Kessler on all defensive second team. So we are the one seed in the Western Conference. We got Josh Giddy and the New Orleans Pelicans in round one. The Mavericks with Donovan Mitchell and Luka were just the sixth seed, so they're on the other side of the bracket. The Pelicans, I mean... They don't have Brandon Ingram anymore, but Giddy and Zion is pretty good. Vic Kemp was a rookie, and they also have Paul George off the bench. So Tyrese Maxey was our leading scorer by the end of the year. He had a true shooting percentage of 68%. We got Jalen Duran, who was just super efficient as well. Jimmy Butler, 62.7% true shooting percentage. Quickly, 61. Oh my God, were we the most efficient team of all time? Possibly. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, Chris Paul, six points and five assists off the bench. Did not shoot the ball really well at all. So for the playoffs, I think Chris Paul may get like 15 minutes a night. I think Jenkins can get 15. Looney can get 15. I'm honestly debating not playing Chris Paul and playing Luke Kennard, who is a pretty good shooter still. Maybe since we have Looney, I don't really need Earl Jenkins. So I'll do something like that. We'll go 15, 15, 25 to quickly. That's good with me. 33 to Duran is fine. Let's go 38 to Jimmy. Let's go 38 to Maxi, And let's go 38 to Fultz. And I can give two more minutes. We'll do to Matzas Buzelas. Since the proficiency, we are three and a half stars. Don't lose to the Pelicans in round one. We ended up dropping game one. It would be really cool if we got to play the Nashville Stars, but they are currently the sixth seed over there. We are up two games to one. We end up winning by 11 in game three. That is a nice win. Shout out to Jalen Duran, man. He's so good. I don't know why the Pistons don't keep him. You could have kept 10 guys and you chose not to keep Jalen Duran. You really want to give James Wiseman that much of an opportunity. Maxi and Fultz combined for 53 points. And we are going to gentlemen sweep the New Orleans Pelicans to go up against the Josh Giddy West Thunder in round two. Shout out to Maxi for balling out in round round one because Buzela struggled from the field. So did Emmanuel quickly. You got the Knicks as a one seed going up against the Hornets. There goes the Nashville Stars, Pistons, and Celtics. Then you got the Jazz and the Mavericks. I feel like the Mavericks are going to advance. Shea, Kaysen Wallace, Stephon Castle, Jalen Williams, and Chad Holmgren in the starting five. It's a good team. It is, but I feel like this Thunder team could be so much better. We end up winning game one by 21 points. Dern with 31-13, three assists, and three blocks as well. Game number two, we win, boom, by nine points. Dern with 26, 21-11 and eight for Jimmy Butler, 14-12 and four for Matzas Buzelis. Let's go up. Mm, no. Yeah, we dropped game three, which is fine. Game number four, we go up three to one. We end up winning by 12. Jimmy Butler, he shows up in the playoffs, 27, four, seven, and five. One block as well. And we are going to gentlemen sweep them after beating them by 16. Matzas Muzelis, who I was like, I might trade at the deadline, gives me 26. Four guys scored north of 20, and it wasn't even our leading scorer this year. That's when you know we're pretty well balanced. And yet, we're going up against the six-seeded Mavericks with Luka Doncic and Donovan Mitchell. You have the Pistons. And the Hornets there. I mean, the Pistons do have Nick Claxton now. And they drafted Ron Holland. And the Hornets, you didn't draft Scoop, but you got Brunson, Lamelo, and Brandon Miller. 
That's pretty good. Let's beat Dallas first. Game one goes to the Supersonics by 13. Jalen Duran, 24-9. He should be able to dominate this team. Game two goes to the Supersonics. We end up winning by 33 points. 12 assists for Buzelis. Three blocks as well. Game three, boom. We are up 3-0. We beat him 144-1. 41, Maxi with 28, Butler with 26, 23 and 15 for Fultz, 22 and 16 for Duran. Don't blow a 3 0 lead. There we go. Jimmy Butler, who I signed, Western Conference MVP. Then you got Cade in the East. So the Jalen Duran Revenge Series right now. Cade, Ivy, Holland, Stewart, Claxton with a sore who won six man of the year off the bench. Marcus Smart. Kevin Herter, THT, a former Supersonic as well. Game one is going to go to the Supersonics. We end up winning by 14 points. Jalen Duran, why did you not keep him? 31 and 11 for him. 8 and 10 for Markel Fultz. 6, 10, and 9 for Buzelis, who struggled from the field. Game two, boom. We end up blowing him out by 33 points. Did Philly, did, they did not make the playoffs with Klay Thompson. They didn't even make the play in tournament. Game number three. Oh my goodness. We were about to dominate. The Western Conference playoffs. Would you look at that? Maxi, man. He has been so good for us. Let's let's sweep the Pistons. I want to sweep the Western Conference and NBA Finals. We get off to a good start. We're currently up by 21 points. The Pistons had a good third quarter, so now we're only up by three. All right, well, we just choked that away. Up by eight, 95, 87, 96, 92. Let's see if we can hold off. We're up by three. Let's watch this final two minutes. All right, so Cade Cunningham with the ball. They do have it uh, with a minute and 50 to go. Marco Fultz is in the game. Same with Maxi at the two as he's going to find Claxton. And wow, good defense there and contest by Jalen Duran. Kick it up to Buzuelis. Uh Yeah, we basically have the starting five out there. I see a sore Kate out there. Ivy's out there. Claxton and Marcus Smart. Obviously a great defender. Jimmy is tired. So you know what, Jimmy? You could pass it out, you know. Don't force it, please. Please, this could be a huge shot. Jimmy's pumping. He's going to go up with the left hand. He's too good. All right, Cade trying to cook on Marco Fultz. Is that going to be a charge? Oh, that might be game right there. All right, Jimmy Bowler going right at Isaiah Stewart. You know you can waste time. Just don't step out of bounds. All right, this is good. I'm glad he passed it because now we can waste 10 more seconds in this game. Fultz guarded by Cade Cunningham. He kicks it over to Jimmy Bowler. He hits that. Jimmy's too clutch. Jimmy's about to get his first ring. Chris Paul's about to get his first ring as well. I think everybody on this team, besides Kevon Looney, is about to get their first NBA championship, which is pretty cool because I don't think Luke Kennard has one. Um, just basically out of guys in our rotation. They miss that three, and it's over. Up by eight with 41 seconds. Just don't force anything. Like You can waste 18 more seconds unless it's a guaranteed bucket. I mean, Marco Fultz trying to go at Clax and takes it. Oh, that would have been a horrible shot. Good catch there by Duran. He goes up, gets that to go, and he's about to sweep his former team. And finals MVP is going to go to Jimmy Butler, the player that we signed last offseason. And the Seattle Supersonics dominated the Western Conference and the just whole NBA playoffs. We had Jalen Duran, average 22, Maxi 21, Jimmy Butler 20. Kind of surprised maybe... Jalen Duran didn't get finals MVP, averaging 22.7, 14, and 2 with a steal and a half a night, only 0.5 blocks. And yeah, the Seattle Supersonics win it all. Hope you guys did enjoy this expansion rebuild here in NBA 2K24. Drop a thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments if I'm going to do another expansion rebuild. Which city do you? Should it be Vegas, Nashville, Charlotte, Mexico City? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace.